Hey, how's everybody doing? This is O from CLO Ed TV. Today we're going to talk about doing your own DIY solar system. Let's get into it. Hey, this is O from CLO Ed TV. Today we're gonna to talk about a DIY solar system. The reason why we're gonna talk about solar is because it is a very viable option and it's readily available to those who wanna create their own power. In my own personal use, I found that I really like using solar to fulfill my electronics and my electricity needs. So I would like to share this video with you to show some options that may be viable for you when you're working on your own solar system. I'd like to start the video by starting off with some information about solar. Solar is a great endeavor to get into. and There are different ways to capture energy from the sun. Generally, there are three types of solar panels and also two subtypes, which include amorphic and monocrystalline and polycrystalline solar panels. Solar panels have a semiconducting silicon material that can absorb photons from the sun, therefore converting that energy into DC power. The cells within the panel are known as photovoltaic cells. These cells mimic the chlorophyll-like substance within plants that absorbs sun energy to convert it into sugar energy for the plants. When sizing your solar panel system, you want to consider what is your average energy uses on a daily, monthly, and weekly basis? What type of appliances you will be using? And also how much money you're willing to invest to begin to start saving in electrical bill costs. Renewable energy technology is getting better as time goes on. Also more affordable and more effective. Although most of these renewable energies are dependent upon the laws of nature they are able to fulfill many of the common needs that the average person needs for their daily use although I consider solar as not a replacement for fossil fuels I do think that it will be a great supplement in consideration when trying to save extra dollars in your electrical bills. I believe renewable energy has a long way to go when it comes to construction, transport and delivery of goods, and major flight and travel as these vehicles require much combustible energy, explosive energy, in order to run effectively. You could think of solar energy as slow and steady while fossil fuel energy is combustible and immediate. So on the table I have this device right here, which is something that I've engineered, or as you can say, this video is about engineering, that actually takes the power from a Ryobi battery and converts it into useful energy. At the top, and I'll set this on the table, you can see that it has a reading that gives you the amount of battery life you have, the actual voltage, the percentage, and the temperature of the battery. Let's see if I can get that better in the camera. Okay, so with that, you want to understand that this is an 18 volt battery, which has 108 watt hours at six amp hours. This gives you a reading of how long that battery is supposed to last. So let's take the battery out and you'll notice that the screen display goes off. It, it disappears. Okay. Now this part, which it plugs in, this is a 3d printed part and I'm going to take the lid off. I purposely, made it separate so you can actually see it. And this part was 3D printed. 
Also, this part was CNC milled. When I flip it to the back, you can see the guts of it and how this thing actually works. So you have connectors wired to a voltage regulator. And then when you flip it this way, as you can see, this is the interface that I chose for it. Now, I wanna talk about why I chose the Ryobi battery platform versus using regular lead acid or um, regular car battery for my choice in how do I store my power. For one, it's easily accessible. Two, it's more portable. Three, there's more options that I can use this for in its own nature. And then four, um, I wanted to do something creative and more fun. So normally people will use uh, a form of a, like a car battery, but for me, I thought that this tool battery would be a lot better to use. So just to demonstrate how it works, let's plug the battery in. So I'm plugging the battery in. And I'll take one device. So in this device, and I just put it up to the camera, this device is, and most electronic devices will have the uh, usage, energy usage labels on the back. This tells you how much wattage, voltage, amperage it uses. So in the case of this nifty little fan right here, which does cool well, it gives you a five volt DC reading at 0.65 amps and 3.3 watts. So this is a very efficient fan. I love this little fan and um, it does really cool. Don't be fooled by its size. It really does cool. But um, we're gonna take this and I'm gonna show you how this fan runs off of this, this inverter. Okay, so all you do is take a cigarette lighter adapter, plug it in, it will turn or light up depending on which adapter that you use and then you can plug in the fan. So the fan has a switch in on the back and you just flip the switch and there goes your fan. Now as you can see this really cools and you know if I could demonstrate how well this actually works. It works very well. There's a good amount of wind off this little fan and you know, it works well. So um, this system is very decent. Not only can I run a fan off of it, I can also run a light off of it. So this is a USB power light. Now this is good for camping, but it's also good for use around the house. This will light up a whole room and I'll go ahead and turn that on now so you can see it. So there's different options you can get. They're very affordable and they come in different options. So this one right here has three temperature cycles. So if you like something warmer, you can choose something warmer or if you like something cooler, you can choose something cooler. But this is a great option. You can also dim it just like that or Raise it to full blast. Okay, so keep in mind, the light bulb and the fan are running right now. So off of this one to walk battery. All right, and right now we're at 29 degrees Celsius, 100% battery, 18.3 volts. And it's doing a good job. So you, technically you could do some cooling and light a room with one of these little batteries. Okay, so we've already clarified that you've chosen a panel and you've picked the panel that's best for your area and for your uh, options. Um, whether you stay in an apartment, live in a home, or doing the van life or in travel, there's an option for you. And I'll get into that in a moment. On the table, I have two items here. A, another type of fan and also a mini blender. Now these two things have something in common. This is the next thing that I wanted to go over is that there are devices that have their own store of energy. So if you were to think of it raining, 
and when it rains that water is coming down you can capture the rain coming down in a big giant barrel that would be considered your car batteries or your bigger um, lithium ion batteries now if you have something small like this this would be like trying to capture that rainwater in a cup it's a smaller store of energy but it's with the device and it does not require a uh, an outlet necessarily you can use a device like this which is on the table this um, inverter that I built or you can just plug it straight in um, in your solar panel or in your charge controller or your power inverter and charge the internal battery and so that way if the power is ever out or you don't have um, any grid power you can use your solar panels to still cool okay so you can still have a way to cool um, using devices that have their own store so this one has three modes actually and a built-in light all right so we're going to talk about the blender in a second and talk about multi-purpose uses for using solar to the blender so basically there are several devices that you can use uh, for your everyday uses from vacuums blenders um, there's several different things that have their own internal store of power an important thing to remember is the more that you collect and use that you create yourself the less that you spend on the grid which means you save money that's the purpose of using solar so what i'm going to do is demonstrate i'm just going to make a quick little uh, green smoothie and what I'll be using which I'm not sponsored for is vital greens and vital reds okay these are very good health products and we're going to use energy from the Sun and some water got the H2O here and we're going to mix this up a little health smoothie and all using the power of the Sun let's do it all right so I'm gonna take my vital reds first and if you're wondering what this has this has a lot of the reds that the body needs the key takeaway from this is not only do you save money in your electric bill by doing it this way if the grid's ever down you can still use a blender make it smoothie okay here's blending right now right there there's a usb port to charge it so this didn't take any grid power to make this for this into got my glass here and there you go there goes your health smoothie you might be saying oh those are small devices small blenders you can't really blend a lot of big stuff in that well here's the good news for you they make portable and rechargeable devices in all shapes and sizes all budgets and prices so you might want to spend two hundred dollars on a ninja you could spend 30 bucks 40 bucks on a rechargeable blender that's just as powerful that you can recharge and you can still use during a power outage that can, you can also save money doing it now you obviously can use all these devices on grid power but that's not the purpose of it you get maximum benefit by using these devices with the solar system because why? You're not paying for the electricity. There's an upfront cost, but after you make that initial investment, you are creating or harvesting that power from the sun to use in your daily life. All it takes is a rechargeable battery that can be used in the sun and in your solar system. You just, once you recharge your battery, you clip it on and get vacuum in. So, there is nothing that you can't do without with that solar system. Anything you can think of that you could do with a regular electrical appliance, you can do with a solar appliance. Here's another example. Yes, the fans I showed you before were very small, but this is an example of a larger fan with a controllable speed and it is energy independent. It has its own internal power source. So there are a lot of options out there when you are considering what devices you're going to use when you're using a solar system. You might be thinking, well, oh, 
getting into solar is expensive. I don't have the money to get into something like this. Well, let me put it to you this way. A dollar saved is a dollar earned. So if you can save $50 a month, $100 a month in your electric bill, think about that money over a span of 12 months. What could you do with the extra $500, an extra $1,000 every year? Also with the rising cost of electricity, which electricity is going up, what are some ways that you can mitigate the rising costs of heating your home or doing general cleaning around the house or watching TV? So on the table here, I have a great option. Those of you who stay in apartments or you may not be ready to get a full on solar system for your home, but you still want to get into solar. So this is an example, which is on the table right here. It's portable, comes with a handle and has straps here you can clip. Um, it unfolds and folds out just like this. And forgive me, it's a little bit dirty because it's been in the ground, but the beautiful part is it's made of a strong canvas and this is no slouch. This is stronger than some older solar panel setups I've had in the past. This setup right here is compact portable and it won't, will not only charge cell phones and small devices, but this will charge a household battery. If you use it all day, it's very powerful. So they have options like this available as well. Affordable, portable, you can use these, hang this off your apartment balconies, or if you have SUV, a truck, or a car, you can throw these on top of them and charge them on a camping trip or just in general in an emergency, you can just throw that out there, charge your devices, roll it back up, throw it in the trunk. So everybody can get into solar. I wanted to take a second to explain how you actually size your uh, devices or your appliances based on your solar system. Now, I'll give you an example. On the table here, I have a set of clippers, okay? Now, these clippers run just fine off of the inverter that it's plugged into. And just to let you know, here it is running. Uh, it's got the green light. I unhook it. Clippers is not working. Just to show you, I hook this back in. And there you go, the clippers clip, uh, ran on right away. Now, when we talk about amperage on a device, that means how much amperage is going through that wire at a certain amount of time. Before you buy any solar or electrical devices, I recommend you get one of these right here. These come in different shapes and sizes as well. This is a kilowatt meter. You can use this around the house to find out uh, what appliances in your house are using a lot of current or electricity and the wattage, the volt, the amperages. You can also figure out how much electricity you actually use in a month with something like this, if you leave it plugged in. So what I need to do now, I can run a pair of clippers off of this system, this one battery, which you see right here is running this clipper right here. So, but here's the key. This inverter is 125 watts. So we need to know, well, how much does this clipper in wattage use and how much amperage does it use? Well, you can look at the back. Normally they have it writ written on the back of each device, but you can also use a kilowatt meter. So I'm gonna plug the kilowatt meter in to see how much the clippers takes in electricity. And if you could, in the comment below, tell me how much you think it is before I plug the meter in. So I'll give you a few seconds to do that and see if you can guess how much wattage and amps does a set of clippers use. All right, so I take my power inverter, plug it in, and it's giving me a reading. So right now I'm getting 115 volts, zero amps because I have nothing plugged in, nothing is drawing amperage from the battery. 
No watts. There's nothing being drawn. So that's why I'm getting that reading right there. So what we're going to do, we're going to plug in the clippers and turn them on. So right now, and I have a, another camera pointed to the number. So I'm going to clip these on. And right now it's using 6.7 watts, 6.7 watts. And it jumped up to 9.4 watts, 9.4 watts. So you can actually uh, say that, okay, if I ran this for a month, how much would that cost me in electricity? Obviously you're only using clippers every once in a while. But the point of it is, you know that, say if you had a light bulb and you run it all the time, you'll know that it uses 9.4 watts. All right, let's look at the amperage. So I'm gonna press the amps and it's using 0.29 amps. 0.29 amps to run this clipper. So we're gonna unhook it. Now, this is a 125 watt inverter and they make some that's more. So I ran clippers, takes about 10 watts. So that leaves me with 115 watts left to run something else. So let's see what else this battery can run. Do you think that this battery can run the television behind me? Let me know, yes or no. If you think that it can run the television behind me, or if this little thing has enough power to run the television behind me, the huge television behind me, let me know. If it's a yes, say yes, no, no, and we'll see if this little battery and run that TV behind me. All right, let's check it out. All right, we're gonna see if this TV can be run off of the same battery. And just to prove to you that that's what's going on here, we've got the battery hooked up to the little eight, uh, step down converter. I had to step it up a little bit to a stronger inverter, but it's the same battery. Okay, we got the reading here. We also got the kilowatt meter to tell us how much this big TV behind us is using. So this one's gonna make a little bit more noise, so forgive me for that. Um, and this is the cord going straight to the TV, just to let you know. All right, here we go. So let's turn the inverter on first. It's gonna be a little bit louder and it uses more energy. Okay, so over here we still got our 20 volts, 100%. Let's see if we can get the TV on. All right. As you can see, the energy kicked in as soon as I hit the TV on and the TV is on. Now, if it'll run the game too, then we've got something. All right, let's see if the game will kick in. Oh, obviously gotta change the input. So we're gonna change the input to HDMI 2. There it is. And right now we're doing pretty good. It went down one volt, as you can see, uh, one volt right here, it went down. So it went from 20 volts to 19 volts. So right now it's doing a pretty good steady pace and it will run it, you know, it's running the TV right now. And that just lets you know how powerful something this small is, okay? So we have ran clippers off of this and we're running a almost 70 watt TV and system together at 0.67 amps. So we're running something very powerful on a battery just like this. And right now it's at a steady 19.2, running this thing pretty strong. So maybe we could try to play a game or something. So what we'll do, we'll take a pause moment and we'll see if it'll actually run a game uh, while it's running the TV. All right, so let's check that out. We will play Tekken. Okay, as you see, it kicked up as soon as the motor went in. You can see we're at a steady 19.2 volts. And um, 
running this on a smaller TV. I've ran an entire TV in the system for two hours on one of these batteries, two hours. So you're not gonna watch, maybe the average movie is two hours. So in a pinch, in an emergency situation, you can watch a movie on one of these batteries. If you put eight of these together, you've got your entertainment for the night. So um, you can use your computer on these, all various electronics, okay? And there's the game that started. We're running at a 19.1, going down to 19.0, 18.9. And like I said, this is a huge TV we're running. We're staying around the 19 voltage, which is good. That means this battery is maintaining this voltage pretty good. All right. And as you can see, game works fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off. And that's just a demonstration to show what you can actually do with a solar system running something small like this. Right, guys, I wanna say thank you. I really enjoyed making this video and I hope it helps someone out there to probably save a few dollars if you're thinking about getting into solar. Now, I will have separate videos on A, how to make a converter box like this to utilize uh, drill batteries for household use. I will also have a separate video explaining in detail the educational aspect of how voltage works and how you can use that voltage for your everyday appliances. Once again, this is O from CLO Ed TV. Please hit that like button and also share this video out will be greatly appreciated. Also check out my website in the comment section below. There you will find merch. You will also find links to get your custom designs made. Hey, we really appreciate you watching. Visit our website for back to school sales, custom pillow designs, 3D printed board games, and more. Go to www.clolearnshot.com to pick up your items today. Thanks again, we'll see you on the next video.